was a state representative, he called a colleague endearingly buckwheat, right? That's endearing. I'm not even for sure if uh, the guy's white or black, but he apologized. He's like, oh, that's a... Uh, that's an endearing term, but he's going to apologize, but um, it's not actually, it's unclear. Who this, who is this wonderful Colorado State Representative? It is Richard Holtorf. Oh, Richard Holtorf. And who is Richard Holtorf? You know who Richard Holt, he's a Republican. Oh, Richard Holtorf. While we're looking that up, uh, Jordan Peterson, I'm looking at his great books list, Emily Bronte, Emily Bronte, Wuthering Heights, Wuthering Heights, what kind of misogynist, this is a terrible anti-feminist, he's got Emily Bronte on his great books list, Emily Bronte, Wuthering Heights, isn't that like a, isn't that like a classic, it was a 1847 novel written by Emily Bronte, right, she had to Published it under a man's name back in 1847. Apparently, that's how sexist shit was, you know, just 18, not even that far ago. So, Wuthering Heights, old Heathcliff, right? You got the uh, Heathcliff, and you got um, the Earnshaws, and the Lintons, and the Landed Gentry, and, and Heathcliff. There's, there's old Heathcliff. There, that's what... So Richard Holtorf, Richard Holtorf, he's he wears a cowboy hat, right? So that's um, don't know. He's balding, probably is what that. No, I'm not sure what that means. Okay, so he represents the 64th district of Colorado House of Representatives. The 64th district, of course, the fighting, the fighting 64th. He's from Akron, which is the northeast part. Of Colorado, 1702 is the population, or was the population. Now, O. Torf, Richard Holtorf, he was appointed to the state house. So he's not even elected. That's why he's, he ran for the seat, okay, in 2020. Then he got elected to the full term, but he was handed the seat to begin with. And now he's just, you know, getting grandfathered in there. So the Republican Vacancy Committee chose Hold tour from a field of five candidates. He got 76 votes out of 115. So that's a uh, that's a little bit of information about Richard Holtorf. Richard Holtorf. He's been in office December 28, 2019. He's been fighting for you, America. No, not he don't give a fuck about you, but he cares about Colorado and he cares about the 64th district. So he's been fighting for you, the 64th district, the fighting 64th district of Colorado. So you better, you know, better send him a fruit basket or some shit. Show your fucking thanks. You know, Richard Holtorf is out there calling people buckwheat for you. You know, he's Committee on the Agricultural Livestock Water Committee, Public Behavioral Health and Human Services Committee. Cannabis outdoor cultivation measures, occupational therapy, expansion of justice crime prevention initiative. He's doing a whole bunch of shit, okay? He's not just calling people buckwheat. Now, compare and contrast, Jordan Peterson, he says, Emily Bronte, he says to stand up. He says, you know, do your best. and He's fucking awesome. I don't, what's the hate about a Jordan Peterson? He tells you to stand up straight. Hey, how dare he? If I want to fucking slouch over like a... A goddamn, sl uh, you know, sloppy ass mother. That's my right. Yeah, you you can't. But um, don't you be proud, tall, stand up. You know, stand tall, stand proud. You don't want to keep them shoulders up. You don't want to keep that. So compare and contrast. Jordan Peterson comes out smelling like a rose. Meanwhile, this you know, what the fuck, dumb mother. Richard Holtorf calling people buckwheat. You know his race. You know he's talking. There was like one black guy, and he was, "Hey, what's up, buckwheat? Hey, what's up, buckwheat?" You you can tell by the t the tone. Let's listen to the tone of this. Let's see if it sounds loving or terrible. We have to wait ten seconds. Now there's. I guess I'll just talk about these two things. Memorial Day Super Sale, on now at Furniture Row. Okay, go, Furniture Row. Thank you, man.
Madam Speaker, Pro Tem, esteemed colleagues, I request a moment of personal privilege. Um, a, personal, a moment of personal privilege has been requested, and please proceed. Thank you, Madam. It is my intent to maintain the highest levels of modicum and behavior in this chamber. Modicum. I think we all need to consider what we do here and how we address and talk to each other. It is in no way that I speak in this dais, in this well, from a point of disrespect. I think that we all have to do better. In this well? I will start with me. But I think we have to respect each other. We have to respect people's time here and listen and be good people and not try to have confrontations across this chamber and I do understand that I take my direction from you, Madam Speaker Pro Tem, Madam or Mr. Chair or Mr. Speaker, and I think we all need to remember that. And I apologize if I've offended anybody in any way. It is not my intent, ladies and gentlemen. If anyone would like to talk to me afterwards, I'd be more than happy to visit with them. So there you go. He's apologizing for saying, you know, he said modicum. I thought it was modicum. You need to have a modicum of decency. Don't you have a modicum of decency? Don't you have a modicum of decency? Because that is when your safety, that is when your life is threatened. I'm getting there. Don't worry, Buckwheat. I'm getting there. I'm now, sorry. what I'd like to say, what I'd like to say, that's an endearing term, by the way. Representative Holtorf, we must maintain order in here and not refer to any individuals other than in any inappropriate manner. So please do not do that any further. Mr. Sullivan. Mr. Holt, Why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling at me? We're in a recess. We're in a short recess. Why are you yelling recess. at me? Why am I? So there you go. Tom Sullivan is white. No, this is an American singer. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Tom Sullivan, he's a Democrat, Colorado. He looks white. He looks white, Colorado State Representative. So, that makes it somewhat better. He's got a tint to him. He's got a little bit of dark, you know, a little hue, a little bit of, a little Greek, a little Greek, um, you know, olive, olive oil skin. So he's known for gun control and some other stuff. Okay, whatever. He's not, it doesn't, it does not look like he's black to me. So, he don't look black. Maybe some olive, but that, that makes it better, because if it was a black person, it's like, what the fuck are you doing? But he, you know, mentioned, he called a, maybe a, probably a racist term. <laughs> he called a white guy buckwheat. Ah, that's my friend buckwheat. Eh, that could be okay. All right, Buckwheat. I like Buckwheat. That sounds... Someone was like, hey, what's up, Buckwheat? Hey, what's up? What's up, dipshit McGee? <laughs> and actually, what I said was the tone. The tone. So let's hear how he said it. All right? Let's hear how he said it. Because that is when your safety... That is when your life is threatened. I'm getting there. Don't worry, Buckwheat. I'm getting there. All right, Buckwheat. It's dismissive. Okay, Buckwheat. Chill out, Buckwheat. All right, Buckwheat. I know what's going on. All right, Buckwheat. So I feel like because he's a white guy, it's, you can't say it's a racist term. It's just stupid. It's just dumb. A possibly racist term, but used on a white guy. So I guess he's just, like, trying to confuse everybody. <laughs> he's just trying to confuse everybody, you know. And it wasn't... Um, clearly, the guy didn't like it. So it can't be a term of endearment if the guy didn't like it. Like, uh, chill out, Buckwheat, it was dismissive, and so that's kind of shitty. He may have actually meant it, you know, it didn't seem like, okay, Buckwheat, you know, it wasn't like, he didn't put any extra sauce on it, he didn't add some tartar sauce to the, <laughs> he 
mean, it, <laughs> no, you know, no uh, garden, no lettuce or tomato on it. Just a plain old whatever cheese sandwich. So, <laughs> hey, buckwheat. I don't know. I could go one way. I could go the other way on it. Uh, he apologized for it, so I don't know. Can, can we keep on talking about it? Probably. Right? We we'll probably could keep on talking about. It. He's got some other things. What if I'm not even sober? Apparently, he asked that eleven. What if? What if I'm not even sober? And then here's another one. Legislative day. Um, he says the comment that he said on the House floor three months ago wasn't a threat of insurrection. So don't worry, Colorado. This um, this guy is not going to overthrow the capital, Richard Holtorf. What if I'm not even sober? How would you know? What if I'm not of a sound state in mind? I guess that's an argument to not wearing mask. I could be drunk as shit behind this mask, and you wouldn't know any. You wouldn't know it at all. So I guess, uh, yeah, it's a, this is the era for drunks, the mask pandemic, you get, <laughs> remove your mask, no, the, I got a responsibility pandemic, I, we got to, this is serious, we got to treat this serious. So it's not a threat of insurrection, that's interesting, and then he also, he suggests that a house colleague should let go of his son's murder. So, Tom Sullivan is for gun control, and I guess he's against gun control, and he doesn't like that he has politicized his son's murder, right, and I guess his son, oh, he got killed in the Aurora Theater shooting, and so the, Tom Sullivan, I guess that's his rise to fame, is, you know, he ran for office after his son got killed in the Aurora Theater shooting, so, to get some gun control, and he's saying he should let go of his son's murder, he should never fucking let go of his son's murder, that's a very... Uh, insensitive and fucked up thing to say. I think I could see where he's, you know, saying gun control or whatever, but, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. That doesn't. What the fuck? 46th District, this is what you all elected? I guess you didn't elect it at first, but after afterwards you elected it. So, let's, we'll, we'll do these two videos, and then, then we're calling it. We're going to call it a night, okay? We're going to read some Wuthering Heights. We're going to cozy up to a nice, you know, chest notes, uh, open fire. I don't know. Shut up. Fuck you. <laughs> Something pretty vile. So this is Kyle Clark. Today. He's Just calling it pretty Tom vile. Used this morning's announcement period to talk about red flag gun control so let's, um, all right, here's another Kyle Clark. So Kyle Clark is, seems to be the only one talking about, you know, Colorado politics. I'll give him a like. He's only got 278 views. Then there's the approach of Republican Representative Richard Holtorf. Richard Holtorf from Akron. Okay, Richard Holtorf from Akron. We'll get to you in a second. Let's see. Sullivan, as you may know, got into politics after his son was shot and killed in the Aurora Theater shooting. A Republican colleague then rose to suggest that Sullivan needs to get over it. I'm here to remind you daily what gun violence looks like. Whether you listen or not, I will continue to come to this microphone and tell you about its impact. Now, I have suffered loss in my life, but I have learned not to hold bitterly onto that loss and never let go. I would ask all of us to consider that as we hold on to, for whatever reason, that loss, let us not be vengeful. Let us not be mean-spirited. Let us not be callous, coarse, or divisive. But let me tell you the most important lesson I learned, and I offer this to my fellow colleagues, particularly the one that just spoke. But you have to let go. Representative Holtorf. So Holtorf, okay, Holtorf just keeps on digging a hole deeper and deeper. Old Dick, old Dick Holtorf is living up to 
It's okay, Akron. Akron, can you all fucking elect some better representatives? Richard Holtorf says sometimes God wants little children to die because they're more useful to him in heaven. What a way to bend the gospel into something perverse and evil. Says ice escape. Okay, I don't know what... That was super fucked up. Let's go on to his other comment. Of Akron, who issued this warning on the floor of the legislature to Democrats. Let's get behind the people of this state. Just, Tom Sullivan should never let go of his son's murder. He should never let go of it. Never let go of it. It was bullshit that it happened. It was bullshit that it happened, and actually, why not, uh, why not push for the death penalty for the guy that did it? I think that would be just, instead of paying for his prison meals and shit. And do what we were sent here to do. And not limit their voice. Because if we continue to do things like that, if you think you had problems last Wednesday, they may not be over yet. Representative Fultorf must be very, very careful not to incite any activities outside of this building. Will you not incite shit outside the building? Okay, thank you very much. I think he's going to respond to it. I was merely saying, if you were here that, at that protest, the biggest outcry was for their voices to be heard and not be limited. And I said that we must keep this open because we could have more problems in the future. Yeah, so comparing and contrast... Can we all agree that Jordan Peterson is better than this whole, 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 whole guy, this Holbrook guy? Right? <laughs>